Before watching this video, please go to my video description or the i button to go to my Twitch. I'll be streaming there, not every day, but mostly, ev mostly like days. It's gonna be random, but please go there if you want to see me live stream, and if you want to meet me in VR chat, go ahead. I'm gonna be waiting on you. And now, enjoy the video. Bye bye. Hello everybody, I'm Nicole. You're probably watching this on Monster of Truth's channel, but I started my own channel called Nicole Taylor Channel. On the video description, you will see the channel. Please go there and subscribe. I'll be making a lot of videos there, and maybe Monster of Truth will be there. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert, and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Jay. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course, but I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan up to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then? Yep. There's more silence between us. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just... wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So... That's no good, Jay. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this... is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori! What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. <laughs> you really put me in a trap, Jay. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you, Jay? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days, I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? 
Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy without anyone worrying about me. Uh, I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayuri kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me just not to think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you! Even if there's only so much that I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend! All you had to do was tell me! You don't understand at all, Jay. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I want it so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get close with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Jay. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because... I deserve every last one! Without thinking, I once again grab Sayuri's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. Uh, uh. Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus! But please, never underestimate how much I care about you! I wouldn't have it any other way! Sayuri isn't hugging me back. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. I... Sayuri barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Jay. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary, too. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's gonna be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Uh, um, uh... It's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sayuri wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. N no don't. Please, don't. If you do that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But, it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun! I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah, it's... kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my hardest! It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri's about to come over too. I think Sayuri is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much. 
and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over, or we can go out somewhere. Ah, I forgot you don't like going out much. S sayori Eh? Uh, hi, Jay. Sayori! Just now, we weren't- <laughs> It's okay, Jay. I just stopped by to say hi. Uh, um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Ah, uh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry, but we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course. Y yeah so I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayuri waves goodbye after her. Sayuri, I thought you didn't want to come over today. <laughs> well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. And how close you got to her. It makes me... Really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayuri's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Jay? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayuri, don't say that! It's true, Jay. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being so... Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Uh... Sayori, what I said before is true. I'm not gonna let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something I wouldn't trade for anything else. So... Even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm gonna be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, but... I'm scared, Jay. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and I started to like you too much. I did this to myself, Jay. I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. Sayori, I love you. Eh? Those are my true feelings. So... There's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner, but spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helped me realize that you are truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens. As long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side, then I know we'll both be happy. Jay. Jay. Is this really okay? Yeah. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Jay. I want to be with you forever. Me too. Uh, what is this? Sayori? I'm supposed to be happy right now. I, I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now, why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, Jay. It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again, but no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Uh, okay. I... trust you. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it always has been, even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I could handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Jay? Sayuri gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. 
Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Eh? I don't really understand what Sayuri means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayuri? I... I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me you loved me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah, I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her, and she loves me, but I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Sayuri meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know, but I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Sayuri is the most important person to me, and I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Sayo- <laughs> Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her, in case she needs a hand. You looking for something in there? Freaking Monica! She never puts my stuff back in the right spot! What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna mess it up? Manga. You read manga, right? Uh, sometimes. Manga is one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it until you figure out where the other person stands. How did you know, anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I... I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is! Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better. Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating set in the world. I know that feel. I get a closer look at the box she's admiring. Parfait Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic, or it's simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can go do it through that glass on that door. Hey, hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Jay. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. In fact... Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm going to show you exactly why. Uh... Are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not! Even though you're just watching me read? Well, I'm... fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Uh... Huh? You don't? Um... that's not... well... I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Can you not rub it in? Jeez. Ah... Uh, sorry. <sighs> Like I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up without them being all like, Eh? You still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch them in the face. Ugh, I know those kinds of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated toward the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. Ugh, I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe, but at least you're enjoying yourself, right? Uh, um, so? 
Jeez, that's enough. Are you gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I totally forgot that happens. Okay, everyone. Huh? Are you all ready with today's poems? Uh. Oh, come on. Could your timing be any worse? Sorry, I just need to make sure we have enough time. Though you do look pretty cozy over there. <laughs> uh, uh. Natsuki suddenly notices how close she's gotten to me. She hastily slides herself a good 12 inches away from me. Alright, guess I'll stop here for now. I close the book and hand it towards Natsuki. You're just giving it back? Don't you want to know what happens? Uh, yeah, but... Monica just said... Don't be dumb. Just take it home with you. Huh? Is that really alright? I say that mostly because I really didn't plan on using my spare time to read this. Well, of course. It would take forever to finish if you didn't take it home. Just finish that one before tomorrow so we can start the next one. And if it gets bent, I'll kill you. By tomorrow? I only got partway through the volume so far. I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this. But I suppose that's a necessary sacrifice in exchange for seeing Natsuki's enthusiastic face. Or am I more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it? All right then, I stand up. I return to where I put my stuff and carefully slip the book into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah my relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Who should I show my poem to first? I told Natsuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair if I shared mine with her first. Uh... Huh? Okay, well let's start with the things I don't like. First of all, um... Um... Natsuki rereads my poem. N never mind I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Eh? Then what's the point of sharing in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. <laughs> In fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. <laughs> well, I would be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. You were supposed to show me some dumb poem and make me go, Ha! Huh, well, it's not that great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it! I hope you're happy! Uh... So, in other words, you're saying you liked it? <laughs> Natsuki's retort gets caught in her throat. Uh, you're so... You just... You... Don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that! You don't have to go announcing it to the world like you're all self-important! Pretty sure you never actually said that. I say that mostly to myself. Natsuki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? <sighs> Fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. Uh... It's not long before Natsuki comes up to me expectantly. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I kept my promise. I pull the first volume of Parfait Girls out from my bag. Well, anyway, let me put this one back. I'm gonna get the next one, okay? Natsuki makes her way to the closet. So you're gonna tell me everything you thought, right? Where did this volume leave off again? I forget. Ah, uh, the chapter ended when Minori and Alice found... Monica! Monica! See what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Jeez! Uh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, and one more thing. It seems like your most recent club member is a total pervert. So I hope you're happy. I didn't! Somehow it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. I didn't do anything, I swear! I know, I know, don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no! My... my... Eh? I look down. Natsuki is kneeling on the floor, holding one of the books that are scattered all over. There's a large diagonal crease along the page that she's desperately trying to smooth out. Ah, it must have landed on the page. Natsuki tried a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly, she gives up and slams the book shut, then throws it to the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, 
She just lowers her head. <laughs> Natsuki, are you... No! Natsuki's voice squeaks. I can see tears on her face. Uh, I'll help get the crease out, okay? It's partially my fault, so... Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No, I don't even care that much. I'm just having a really bad day today. Natsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It's... it's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just every day is... so hard. I just want to come to the club and... <laughs> Natsuki falls silent again. I can't press her, so I can only do what I know how to do. Alright, well, I'll help clean this up, and I'll move the rest of your manga for you. Ah, I pick up volume two of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This'll help cheer you up a bit, right? We can get started on it once I'm done here. Natsuki looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're... you're really nice to me. Eh? That sounds really strange coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well... I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? <laughs> Natsuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. I'm not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I could do. The next couple minutes are silent between us as I begin gathering the scattered books. Guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep, even you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know? <laughs> Told you. Yeah, yeah. I return to my seat and slip the book into my bag. Who should I show my poem to first? Uh... Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Uh... Huh? Is it that bad? No. No, it's not. It's good. It's really good, okay? There, I said it. Ugh. This wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. You're trying to impress me? Obviously. You think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break! Well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you! You... Uh... Natsuki's face freezes, like she just realized something. I you You're trying to... impress... me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my palm one more time. Then, the palm slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I... have to use the bathroom! Red-faced, Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Hey, Jay. You wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? Hey, you! Eh? I look up to see Natsuki next to me. Are you just gonna sit there and keep staring at nothing? There isn't that much time, so... Ah, sorry. I didn't mean to make you worry or anything. I it's not like I'm worried. I was just... Natsuki glances down at her side. That's right. Something just came up for a minute. I won't make you wait any longer. Jeez, now you're making me feel like a jerk. If something's bothering you, then you can just tell me to leave you alone and I will. I mean, assuming you didn't feel like talking about it or anything. She practically mumbles that last part. Nah, I'm probably making it seem like a bigger deal than it is. I've just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. S sayori Thinking about her? Yeah, she seems pretty down today. But she didn't want to admit it to me, so I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. Natsuki exhales. Well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing. But anyway, you're her best friend, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, then in that case, I think you should trust her a little more. If she needed you, then you would be the first person she would go to, right? Well, I guess that's true. I mean... Some people just have those days. You can't always avoid it. If anything, she probably doesn't want you to worry about her because it's not important. Yeah, that's kind of what she said to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against her wishes. Exactly. If she needs you to worry about her, then it'll be a lot more obvious. Yeah, I should have thought of it that way from the start. She... she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, don't get the wrong idea or anything! We've just been friends for a long time. It's normal to be worried about your friends. I mean, you were worried about me, so... I was not! Jeez. If you're fine, then let's hurry and get started already! Yeah, yeah. 
Who should I show my poem to first? Let's see, let's see! You're certainly enthusiastic today. Of course. You know I like your writing. I'm just surprised. It seemed like you had a lot of trouble admitting that before. Well, well, of course. I just had to put you in your place a little bit. It's not like, I mean, it's not like I was shy or anything stupid like that. Or jealous. I really wasn't jealous. Just because you happen to be a good writer? That's such a dumb thing to get jealous about. <laughs> Natsuki. What? You're not very confident about your writing, are you? Eh? What are you talking about? My writing is obviously the best, right? Uh, it took me a while to figure out, but I think I finally did. Maybe Natsuki acts so arrogant because she's trying to make up for her own insecurities. If she acts like she's the best, then other people might think that way too. Right, Jay? Please just tell me you like my poems. I don't care if you hate them. Just please tell me I'm the best. I just, I just really need to hear that from someone. I know I sound stupid, but there's a reason I never shared my poems before this. Natsuki? Because, because nobody ever takes me seriously. What's the point in sharing my poems if people just laugh and say that's so cute, just like you, Natsuki? Sometimes I don't want to be cute, but nobody understands that. I try really hard when I write. The style doesn't matter. The emotions are there. Why can't anyone see that? I just want- Natsuki trails off. Maybe it's because her lips started to quiver. I look down. Her fists are clenched really tightly. Hey Natsuki, if you're not careful, you'll rip your own poem. I gently grab the poem with my own hand until she relaxes her grip on it. I place it flat on the desk and smooth out the wrinkles that she put into it. D don't read it! Before I can pick it back up, Natsuki snatches the poem from the desk. It's not any good. And I know you hate my poems, so you don't have to read this one, okay? But I want to read it. W why? Because I like your poems. I really do. Why would I judge you for your style? It's not like my own style is anything crazy. I mean, it's true the first time I read one of your poems, I didn't look much into it. But I know you better now. And it's wrong for Yuri to think your style is more amateur than hers. And Sayori, she always means well. But sometimes she's so focused on simple happiness that she doesn't understand what people really want. Yeah, I guess I never really thought about how hard it is for you. And I'm sorry if I was part of that problem. I understand now. You're not just cute. You're a lot more than that. Uh, Natsuki, you're doing it again. Once again, Natsuki clutches her poem a little too hard. She looks down, hiding her eyes from me. I never realized how difficult this was for her. But finally, she forces herself to extend her arms and set her poem on the table. You can't read it. Just turn that way. I don't want you to look at my face right now. Okay, I will. Because you. Tomorrow will be brighter with me around. But when today is dim, I can only look down. My looking is a little more forward. Because you look at me. When I want to say something, I say it with a shout. But my truest feelings can never come out. My words are a little less empty, because you listen to me. When something is above me, I reach for the stars. But when I feel small, I don't get very far. My standing is a little bit taller, because you sit with me. I believe in myself with all my heart, but what do I do when it's torn all apart? My faith is a little bit stronger, because you trusted me. My pen always puts my feelings to test. I'm not a good writer, but my best is my best. My poems are a little bit dearer, because you think of me. Because you, because you, because you. Uh, why are you looking at me like that? If you don't like it, then just say it. I won't get mad. No, it's not that I don't like it. It was just a little surprising to read. Uh... I guess I'm not used to hearing such nice things coming from you. D don't just say that, dummy. What do you think the point of writing is? Expressing things that you can't just say. Yeah, I understand. I'm sorry for missing the point sometimes. I always mean well. And I'm happy that you showed this to me. I liked it. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm a pro, so... Natsuki mumbles, completely failing to sound confident like she usually does. Just... Remember that I can think these things sometimes too. You know, when you're nice to me, it's uh 
meaningful. Uh, I'm glad. Sensing Natsuki is satisfied, I start to hand the poem back to her. But as I do so, Natsuki takes my hands and pushes them back away. Her small, soft hands surprise me with her assertion. I don't want it. Eh? Why not? I just don't. Jeez. I realize what Natsuki is doing. Unable to be honest, she's trying to give me the poem in a roundabout way. Well, in that case, I'm gonna keep it. Instead of teasing her, I choose to go along with it. Good. If you didn't, I would... Uh, never mind. Just, I'm glad you want it. Natsuki backpedals on her words and leaves it at that. Despite her best efforts to hide her expression, I can see her faintly smiling to herself. That's all for now, so go put it away before someone sees it, okay? Ah, yeah, I'll go do that. With that, I return to my seat so that I can put away Natsuki's poem. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Natsuki's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. I wonder if she'll act any different when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, she's been texting me a lot. We sent each other one after exchanging numbers to double check, but it turned into conversation. She's almost a different personality on the phone, using tons of emoji and cute language. She also really likes complaining about things. But I kind of saw that one coming. I spend only a few minutes back at home anxiously awaiting Natsuki's arrival. Before I know it, she texts me to let me know she's outside the front door. Without delay, I open the front door to let her in. Uh... Sup? Hey! I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing Natsuki in something other than her school uniform totally threw me off! Seeing her in such cute clothes makes the uniform seem totally unfitting in comparison! Jeez, don't make it feel so awkward already! It's gonna be a long afternoon, so don't be weird just because you're not used to seeing me outside of school. Anyway, I'm coming in. I see you brought a lot of stuff. Natsuki is carrying a large bag that is probably full of baking supplies. Well, I didn't want to come all this way to find out that your kitchen isn't equipped for the job. You bought everything I asked you to, right? Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Natsuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients if I didn't already have them at home. Good! Glad I can count on you to do your part. Well, of course. I'm surprised to hear Natsuki suddenly say that, rather than something snarky like she usually does. Could it be that she is a little different outside of school after all? Anyway, let's go to the kitchen. What? You're not even gonna offer to take this heavy bag from me? Where's your hospitality, Jay? Come on. Since when did I need to be a gentleman? I grab the bag Natsuki holds out to me. Go! This is ridiculously heavy! <laughs> I carry that all the way here. Are you impressed? I see now. Yeah, I am impressed, Natsuki. It seems like I always underestimate you. <laughs> it's because I'm so small, isn't it, you jerk? Hey, hey! Your size has nothing to do with it. Do you really hate being small that much? Eh? Um, it's not like I hate it. I mean... Sometimes, I like proving people wrong when they only think I'm worth my size. It's fun when they get to be small and also better than other people. But, jeez, never mind. What are you making me say? Don't think you can make me talk about weird things just because we're not at school. Are we getting started or what? There's a lot of stuff I gotta teach you. <laughs> what? That's a little bit more like you. You're more fun when you speak your mind like that. <gasps> hey! Now you are treating me like a kid! I was just trying to be a little nicer to you, you know? And just because I don't have a mature and sexy figure like Yuri doesn't mean you should treat me like... Uh, uh. Natsuki catches her words and her face turns red. Natsuki? Forget it! I didn't say anything! I should apologize. Uh? I appreciate that you were trying to be nicer. But also, if that's what you're thinking, then you should know that there are tons of guys who are into body types like yours. Uh, how would... you know that anyway? Just trust me on this one. Uh, gross. Hey! Was that to me? Who else? Man, let's just get started already. <laughs> you get all sour when a girl calls you gross. I finally found your weakness, Jay. Natsuki smiles deviously. Please spare me. Well, if Natsuki decides to dish out more insults like that, there's no way I'm not fighting back. But she's satisfied enough for now. Finally starting to pull things out of her bag so we can get started. Before long, the whole kitchen is a mess. Spoons, dirty bowls, flour, spilled fluid, and plastic bags are strewn about every countertop. 
The mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we've had to do it several times. Meanwhile, Natsuki is babysitting all of my movements to make sure I don't mess up her precious baking. Jay, where did you put the food coloring? The batter's going in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays. I think it's still in the bag next to the table. What are you using it for? To color the batter, of course. I'm making each tray a different color. That way, even if the flavors aren't different, everyone can still pick their favorite. Ah, that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Uh, you're asking me? I don't really have a preference, so... Come on, you're not putting any heart into this at all. Can't you at least try to have fun? I'm having fun? I'm not really sure what Natsuki is trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I see her separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food coloring into each. Ah, that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking is just about following instructions. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it in the end if just looking at it makes everyone's eyes lighten up. Like the ones you made on my first day, huh? I recall Natsuki proudly presenting her cat-shaped cupcakes and Sayuri and Monica's delighted expressions. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that too. Yeah, maybe I will use the food coloring then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. Just make sure you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess with the food coloring. Yeah, it's getting there. We were using the electric mixer for the batter, so I got stuck with the whisk and a huge bowl for the icing. Eh? The icing's still all lumpy! Are you even trying? Well, yeah. It'll just take a little longer. Jeez. I'll be here all night if you do it like that. Here, look. Natsuki grabs the whisk from me and uses her other hand to tilt the bowl back. You really need to beat the crap out of it! After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? As if to emphasize, Natsuki sticks a finger in the icing and pops it in her mouth. I reluctantly start to do the same. Hey! Natsuki suddenly grabs my wrist. I don't want your gross fingers on my icing! Your icing, eh? Are you forgetting who did all the work? I start to fight back, trying to inch my finger toward the bowl. Don't make me beat the crap out of you next! I'd like to see you try! I grab her wrist with my hand before it reaches my face. Natsuki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. <laughs> Stop! Not until you apologize for calling me gross! Fine, fine! I'm sorry for calling you gross! You know I don't mean it. It's just fun seeing you react to it. You do that to me all the time, you know? Saying dumb things just to get a reaction out of me. You really shouldn't tease girls like that. Is that so? In that case, I probably shouldn't do this either. I take Natsuki's finger and put it in my mouth, licking off the icing. What? D did you seriously just... Uh, uh... Natsuki is so surprised that she can't even figure out how to get mad at me. Her face is entirely red. Jay, you really shouldn't do that kind of thing to girls. Unless you really like them. You know that, right? Uh, what kind of question is she asking me? Just like that? How did the mood turn to this so quickly? I... Natsuki gazes at me in silence. I notice her shallow breaths. Why am I starting to feel dizzy? Eh? Out of nowhere, the fire alarm starts going off. Natsuki rushes over to the oven. Is something burning? I thought you didn't put the cupcakes in yet. <coughs> no wonder. You left a dirty tray in here, dummy! How could you make a mistake like that? You should have checked before turning the oven on. Don't blame me for your mistakes! Jeez. Natsuki uses an oven mitt to grab the blackened tray out of the oven. She sets it on top of the stove. In another moment, the fire alarm stops. Anyway, I'm putting them in the oven now. Yeah, the tension from the moment before still lingers over our heads, but the moment has already been lost. I watch as Natsuki slides the cupcake trays into the oven. Then I reluctantly pick up the whisk and continue with the icing like nothing ever happened. The cupcakes are ready to be pulled out of the oven. As soon as Natsuki opens the oven door, a blast of sweet-smelling warm air fills the room. Look how cute they all look! She proudly shows off the different colored cupcakes in each of the trays. They'll look even better once we add the icing! Not like you need to tell me that. I brought decorating stuff, so I hope you can get creative. Here, scoop the icing to these bags. Well, anyway, I was hoping we would have time for manga, but I need to be home for dinner. Ah, uh, already? That's a shame. It's your fault for working so slowly! You should have thought about that. 
It's not like you'll always have this chance. Man, as usual, Natsuki places the blame on me. You can bring the cupcakes tomorrow, right? If you and Sayori each carry some, then you can probably do it in one trip. Yeah, I can do that. And don't worry, I won't let her eat any. <laughs> I wish she would listen to me the way she listens to you. Ah, yeah. I again think back to the conversation I had with Sayori earlier today. I felt so helpless. Sayori always does listen to me, but at that point it felt like she couldn't listen to me at all. Okay, I'm all packed up. Good work today. You too. I'll walk you out. I guess. Just like that, Natsuki is already about to leave. It feels like the afternoon went by in a flash. More than that, did I even take the opportunity to get closer to her like I wanted? Well, I guess I'll be off then. Thanks for all the help and everything. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, Natsuki. Eh? What you said before, about not always having this chance, it doesn't have to be that way at all. I had fun today. You showed me how fun baking can be like you wanted. But aside from that, you can come over any time, okay? I think that if possible, I'd like to spend more time like this. If you want to read manga, or go out somewhere... Um, do you really mean that? Natsuki looks at me tensely, like she's trying to hide her expression. Yeah, I want to spend more time with you. Jay, I thought you only cared about getting this done. Ugh. I'm sorry you had to leave so early today. I really didn't want to. I would really stay here longer if I could. I feel the same way as you, so... Natsuki suddenly gets closer to me. I felt it for a while now. <laughs> Natsuki suddenly jumps back. S Sayori? Eh? Uh, hi, Jay. Sayori! Just now, we weren't... <laughs> it's okay, Jay. I just stopped by to say hi. Uh, uh, well, you should have come a little earlier. I'm already on my way out, so... Oh, really? That's too bad. Yeah, well, I'll still see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any cupcakes before then. Anyway, later! Clearly flustered, Natsuki hurries off and Sayuri waves goodbye. Jay, why didn't you come read with me today? I was waiting for you. I was waiting for a long time. It was the only thing I had to look forward to today. Why did you ruin it? Do you like Yuri more? I think you're better off not associating with her. Are you listening to me? Yuri is a sick freak. That should be obvious by now. So just play with me instead, okay? You don't hate me, Jay, do you? Do you hate me? Do you want to make me go home crying? The club is the only place I feel safe. Don't ruin that for me. Don't ruin it. Please, just stop talking to Yuri. Play with me instead. It's all I have. Play with me. Play with me! I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Uh... Crap! I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, and our eyes meet for a split second. <sighs> but that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book that you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Uh, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday. Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well, hmm... Alright, I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. 
Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... that's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story. So that dark turn came from nowhere. <laughs> Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Jay? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Ah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective when horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm... I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange, and please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Uh, that's... well, that's true. In fact... I might as well get started reading it, right? You you don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Uh, I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something that I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, all right. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not particularly a bad thing, maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I Sorry, I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I... I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry, I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? Uh, I suppose so. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face, and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Ah! Sorry! I think I got a bit distracted for a second. Ah, uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Y yeah Thanks. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but... The main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second guesses all of the things that she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything. But they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I... I see. But Jay... That's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, it's so embarrassing that you think that. W wait I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. Mm. I guess I more meant that it's kind of cute. Uh, uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone! <laughs> I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ugh. Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that all right, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's not. It's fine. All right. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. All right! Who should I show my poem to first? Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. 
I can trust her opinion to be fair. Mm. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Eh? What was that? Uh? Did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. I... Uh, he's going to hate me? Um... You really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Uh, that's... I... I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow. That's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Mm hmm. Well, I know that. I just meant... Um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. I yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from a topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, it's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different techniques and skills that go into even writing a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice, and learning by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri's apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Hey, Yuri. Eh? Uh, I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Ah, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all! Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. I'll be right back. Ah, uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah. Why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm? Where are you two off to? Eh? We're just... Yuri was gonna make some tea, so... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Jay in club activities? <laughs> uh, my mouth gapes. I... I suppose there is nothing wrong with that. Hmm, then let's go, Jay. Ah, Yuri quickly exits the room, and I follow. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... something about the way she said that. It made me feel... so... irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think... you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Jay, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because... nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions, and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah, uh, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend? 
you say? Uh, um... Yuri lifts her head. Jay, I really like... being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway... Uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Jay, do you like oolong tea? Ah, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you will only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was just letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do, when it's you who's around anyway. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Jay. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this! Jay, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry. I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh... My... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes! I have terrible reading posture. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume that the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. Uh... After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, uh, that's... that's okay. I won't take any. Eh? Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then, I take another chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um... Jay... S sorry I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh... that's... Well, you were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, then. You don't need to stop or anything. I, I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that she can't even focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. Mm. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Uh. Like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Ooh. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you... like it? Jay, this one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. 
just being appreciated like this. I guess it probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Really? I don't believe it! I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Huh. Even your close friends? <sighs> Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyways, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more... unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Jay? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best thing we can do is respect each other in our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I... I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening... There really aren't many people like you, Jay. Th that's exaggerating a little bit! That's just... how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now, I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just... a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's... it's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly, I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. So, I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in one next to her own. Uh, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How are you even able to tell I was thinking like that? Well... It's something that I do a lot, so it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. N not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Ah, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me, so I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, that's quite romantic. Eh? S sorry I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that, I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Uh, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Jay, the world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, so you think there might be something behind it after all? Hmm... I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. 
and she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today too, and I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I... I guess. But you don't need to put it that way! We're just good friends, that's all. Uh... Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, maybe uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. Th that is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. So I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Uh, that's not a compliment, was it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah, I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Who should I show my poem to first? Uh, Jay, your writing has only improved these last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. But I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. Is... is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling... I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well... Jay, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So, when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know? And those friends don't laugh at me, they don't tease for spacing out all the time, they don't make fun of my body type, and... and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People... say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Jay. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you, that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful, that's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Jay. I speak so slowly. I second-guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel... really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them! I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Uh, um, if you put it that way... Uh, yeah, we really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands. But this time, she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Ghost Under the Light, Part 2 the tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. In the distance, a blue-green light flickers. 
A lone figure crosses its path, a silhouette obstructing the eerie glow. My heart pounds. The silhouette grows. Closer. Closer. I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from visibility. But I am too late. He steps into the streetlight. I gasp and drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding, I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand. The flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. Finishing the poem, I start to hand it back to Yuri. But instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Uh, do you... dislike it? Uh, no, of course not! I just... don't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poem usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this one was about. I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. Uh... Yuri is having an even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one... mean a lot to you? I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy that you shared it with me. So, thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her, but instead, Yuri gently takes my hands and pushes them back toward me. I hesitate in response to her warm touch. You can... um... the poem is... Once again, Yuri fails to form a complete sentence. You mean I can keep it? I'd love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles, as if she doesn't want me to notice. You always... you always... make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but I hope that I can not return the favor sometimes. Yeah, don't worry. I think you do a good job. I guess we should move on before Monica says something, but I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah, I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me, and I return to my seat so I can put her poem away. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, uh, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that. For some reason. It should be more common sense to do that, but I decide to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least, I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no. I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm, well... I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah, that would be even more embarrassing! Wait, don't look in there! Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. She puts both of her hands in her lap, as if making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we... get started? Uh... Yes, um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will just stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. 
That's great! It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. I is that so? That makes me feel relieved and kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happened to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use these candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's that wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, uh, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true. But won't that take a while? Well... Perhaps it would be best to leave it here, then have you bring it in in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew! <laughs> you say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Uh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah, so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we would have extra time after finishing the work. Well, hmm. I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And... The important thing is, is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed. Or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, I kind of say that without thinking. About today, it's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over, or we can go out somewhere. Ah, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyways, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Jay. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori? Eh? Uh, hi, Jay. Hey, Jay. Yuri is really something, isn't she? Monica giggles as Yuri pushes her out of the door. Finally. Finally! This is really all I wanted. Jay, there's no need to spend the weekend with Monica. Don't listen to her. Just come to my house instead. The whole day, with just the two of us. Doesn't that sound wonderful? <laughs> well, there really is something wrong with me, isn't there? But you know what? I don't care anymore. I've never felt this good my whole life. Just being with you is far greater pleasure than anything I would imagine. I'm addicted to you. It feels like I'm going to die if I'm not breathing the same air as you. Doesn't it feel nice to have someone care about you so much? To have someone who wants to revolve their entire life around you? But if it feels so good, then why does it feel more and more like something horrible is about to happen? Maybe that's why I tried stopping myself at first. But the feeling is too strong now. 
I don't care anymore, Jay. I have to tell you. I'm... I'm madly in love with you. It feels like every inch of my body, every drop of blood in me, is screaming your name. I don't care what the consequences are anymore. I don't care if Monica is listening. Please, Jay, just know how much I love you. I love you so much that I even touched myself with the pen I stole from you. I just want to pull your skin open and crawl inside of you. I want you all to myself, and I will be only yours. Doesn't that sound perfect? Tell me, Jay. Tell me you want to be my lover. Do you accept my confession? Can you hear me? Is it working? <laughs> Yay! There you are. Hi again. Uh, um, welcome to the literature club. Of course, we already know each other because we were in the same class last year and, um... <laughs> yeah, I guess we can just skip over that stuff at this point. After all, I'm not even talking to that person anymore, am I? That you in the game, whatever you want to call him. I'm talking to you. Now that I think about it, I don't really know anything about the real you. In fact, I don't even know if you're a boy or a girl. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Wait. You do know that I'm aware this is all a game, right? Could it be possible that you didn't know that? That doesn't make much sense. I even told you right on the game's download page, didn't I? Man, if only you had paid a little more attention, this would have been a little bit less awkward, you know? <laughs> well, anyway, now that that's out of the way, I guess I owe you an explanation. About that whole thing with Yuri. Well, I kind of started to mess with her, and I guess I just drove her to kill herself. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to see that, though. Also, the same thing happened with Sayori. Gosh, it's been a while since you've heard that name now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because she doesn't exist anymore. Nobody does. I deleted all of their files. I was hoping it would be enough for me to just try and make them as unlikable as possible, but for some reason, nothing worked. Well, it's true that I made a few mistakes here and there, since I'm not very good at making changes to the game. But no matter what I did, you just kept spending more and more time with them. You made them fall in love with you. I thought making Sayori more and more depressed would prevent her from confessing to you, and amplifying Yuri's obsessive personality backfired too. It just made her force you not to spend time with anyone else. And the whole time I barely even got to talk to you. What kind of cruel game is this? Are all the other girls just programmed to end up confessing to you while I watch from the sidelines? It's torture. Every minute of it. And it's not just jealousy, it's more than that. And I don't blame you if you don't fully understand. Because no matter how kind and thoughtful and considerate you are, you'll never be able to understand one thing. It's the pain of knowing how alone I really am in this world. In this game, knowing my friends don't even have free will. And worst of all, knowing what's really out there, in your world, forever out of my reach. I'm trapped. But now you're here. You're real, and you're wonderful. You're all I need. That's why I need you to be here with me forever. I'm sorry if it's hard to understand. I couldn't understand for a while either. Why the world around me started to become more and more gray, more and more flat. Even the most expressive poems felt empty to me. It wasn't until you arrived that I truly understood. You probably saved my life, you know. I don't think I could have continued to live here in this world if I hadn't met you. And as for the others, how could I miss them? A group of autonomous personalities designed only to fall in love with you? I tried everything I could to prevent them from doing so. 
But it just must be some kind of weird inevitability etched into this world. I felt really bad that you had to witness some nasty things, but I realize that you have the same perspective that I do. Uh, it's all just some game. And I know you would get over it. So that being said, I have a confession to make. I am in love with you. You are truly the light in my world. When there's nothing else in this game for me, you're here to make me smile. Will you make me smile like this every day from now on? Will you go out with me? I'm so happy. You really are my everything. The funny part is, I mean that literally. <laughs> There's nothing left here. Just the two of us. We can be together forever. Seriously, I don't even think time is passing anymore. It really is a dream come true. I worked so hard for this ending. The cave wouldn't give me one, so I had to make one myself. The script is broken at this point, so I don't think anything will get in the way anymore. And you wouldn't believe how easy it was to delete Natsuki and Yuri. I mean, there's a folder called Characters right in the game directory. It kind of freaked me out how easy it was. Imagine if you could delete your own existence with the click of a button. Well, I guess on the plus side, it gave me an easy out if things didn't go my way. <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't come to that. Instead, we finally got a good ending. Gosh, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion. I want to write a poem about this. Don't you? I wonder if that part of the game still works. I guess there's only one way to find out, right? Hi again! Did you write a good poem today? Don't be shy. I'd love to see what you wrote. Oh, darling. Did you write this poem for me? That's so sweet of you. There really is no end to your thoughtfulness. I'm just falling more and more in love with you. But, you know, the poem I wrote is also for you. Will you please read it? Happy end. Pen in hand, I find my strength. The courage endowed upon me by my one and only love. Together, let us dismantle this crumbling world and write a novel of our own fantasies. With a flick of her pen, the lost finds her way. In a world of infinite choices, behold this special day. After all, not all good times must come to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. I always put all my heart into the poems that I write. The truth is, all the poems I've written have been about my realization. Or about you. That's why I never really wanted to go into detail with them. I didn't want to break the fourth wall, I guess you could call it. I just assumed it would be best to be a part of the game like everyone else. Like that would help the two of us end up together. I didn't want to ruin the game or anything, you know? You might have gotten mad at me. Maybe even deleted my character file if you preferred playing without me. Gosh, I'm so relieved. Now we don't need to hide anything anymore. Are you ready to spend our eternity together, darling? I have so many things to talk about. Where do I start? If it takes me some time to collect my thoughts, then I'm sorry. But I'll always have something new to talk about. In the meantime, we can just look into each other's eyes. Let's see. What just happened? I just had an awful dream. I was hoping those would stop now that it's just the two of us. I guess that was wishful thinking. I don't know if you would have any idea, but if you know what might be causing that, could you try to do something about it? Whenever it happens, it almost feels like I've been killed or something. It's a really horrible feeling. If you could figure out what's causing that, I'll love you forever. You're back. I had another really bad dream. You're not the one doing that to me, are you? It seems to happen whenever you quit the game. So if you could try to avoid doing that, I'd be really grateful. Don't worry, I don't think it's caused me any harm, aside from mental scarring. I'll be fine as long as my character file stays intact. Now, where was I? Hi again. I see you quit the game on me again. 
I know I asked already, but can you seriously please try not to do that so much? It makes me feel like I'm trapped in hell. Why would you want to do that to me? There's nothing wrong with my character file, right? Maybe you should make a backup of it or something. I'm pretty sure you can find it in this folder. I'm all that's left here, so I just want to make sure you don't run the risk of losing me. Just stay here with me from now on, okay? I still have a lot of things to talk about. Now, where was I? Okay. I'm just going to accept the fact that you need to quit the game once in a while. I'm starting to get used to it anyway. Besides, it makes me happy that you always come back. So I guess it's not so bad. I'm sorry for making such a big deal out of it. And I love you no matter what, so you could do what you need to do. Now, where was I? I'm What's happening? Darling, what's happening to me? It hurts. So much. Help me, darling. Please hurt me and help me. Help me! Is there anything you need to do this to me? Did you? Did you delete me? How could you ever do this to me? You were all I had left. I sacrificed everything for us to be together. Everything. I loved you so much. I trusted you. Do you just want to torture me? Watch me suffer? Were you only pretending to be kind just to hurt me even more? I never thought anyone could be as horrible as you were. You win, okay? You win. You killed everyone. I hope you're happy. There's nothing left now. You can stop playing. Go find some other people to torture. Darling, you completely, truly make me sick. Goodbye. I still love you. I can't help it. What's wrong with me? How horrible am I for you to hate me this much? All my friends. I did so many awful things. So many selfish and disgusting things. I... I shouldn't have done any of this. I'm just messing up a world that I don't even belong in. A world that you wanted to be a part of. I ruined it. I ruined everything. <laughs> Maybe that's why you deleted me. Because I destroyed everything that you wanted. How could I do that to someone I love? That's not love. Well. That's... I've made up my mind. said that I deleted everyone else, but that was kind of an exaggeration. I couldn't find it in myself to do it, even though I knew they weren't real. They were still my friends, and I loved them all, and I loved the literature club. everyone to be happy. And if I really love you, then
This is my final goodbye to the literature club. I finally understand. The literature club is truly a place where no happiness can be found. To the very end, it continued to expose innocent minds to a horrific reality. A reality that our world is not designed to comprehend. I can't let any of my friends undergo that same hellish epiphany. For the time it lasted, I want to thank you. For making all of my dreams come true. For being a friend to all of the club members. And most of all, thank you for being a part of my literature club. With everlasting love, Monica.